recognizes something I've always said in this chamber and the other. Good guys and women on Wall Street, but Wall Street didn't build this country. The middle class built the country, and unions built the middle class. The president also touched on police reform as well as foreign policy. Well, just moments after the president's speech ended, South Carolina U.S. Senator Tim Scott delivered the Republican response. He says the president painted a picture of partisanship. But Democrats wanted to go it alone. They spent almost $2 trillion on a partisan bill that the White House bragged was the most liberal bill in American history. Only 1% went to vaccinations, no requirement to reopen schools promptly. COVID brought Congress together five times. This administration pushed us apart. Well, Senator Scott also says it was the Republican administration under President Trump that paved the way for our economic recovery. We've got more reaction now to President Biden's address this morning. We're bringing in political analyst and former Florida Congressman Brett Keller. Looks like you are uh, live from the Oval Office again, my friend. Good to see you. <laughs> That's right. Good to see you. We Absolutely. like your backdrop. All right. So well, let's thank talk you. first about the president's speech last night. Obviously, one of the biggest things that he talked about was the spending plan. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Well, I think substantively it was uh, pretty much as expected and that he talked about the success with the coronavirus vaccination and most, most adults being vaccinated. And then second, what you just mentioned, the transportation funding project. I think he talked about that in large part because that's the one area where you still have some bipartisan hope and chance of working together there. So it wasn't surprised me at all that he talked about that. I think the thing that most stands out for me about the speech was the setting itself in terms of being um, very sparsely populated and people wearing masks. And of course, you had the two female leaders sitting beside uh, behind President uh, Biden for the first time. And so I think that's what's going to stand out as being unique about this particular address. What do you think about trying to get this spending plan pushed through Congress? As a member, a former member of Congress, I mean, you've been there, so you know what that's like to try to convince both sides about spending that amount of money. It's been a long time since they've looked at an amount that large. We're talking, what, between these combined bills, almost $6 trillion. It is a lot of money. Uh, one of the reasons you see them talk about money issues is to avoid the filibuster. There's some bills that you can push through through the um, – the process of budget reconciliation, so you only need 50 votes. So it's not surprising they talked about that. Um, it's not surprising that the things that they did hit had some really pop popularity, for example. If you talked about raising taxes, it'd be very unpopular, but if you talked about only being for people more than 400,000, then you, you dramatically limit the opposition, that sort of thing. And similarly, when you talk about providing uh, free college for everyone at, at all levels, it, it'd be a ton of money. But when you're talking about just community college, it's a, it's a lot more uh, doable thing. And so I think he tried to uh, appeal to the base, but also strike a bipartisan tone and, and focus on the things that perhaps could get done. Senator Scott uh, brought up race in his uh, speech after the president talked a lot about uh, sort of the great divide in this country that he does not feel America is a racist country. And, he, and you could tell he was talking a little bit about this critical race theory that some people would like to see taught in schools. What are your thoughts there, Rick? Yeah, I agree. I don't think America is a, uh, a racist country in, in any way. I, one thing I would disagree with what Senator Scott was saying is I don't think President Biden really struck a, a a partisan tone at all. I think he tried to be bipartisan. For example, if you were someone on the fringes and you wanted to defund the police, um, he didn't talk about defunding the police. He talked about all the police that actually did, did a good job and that we need to support the good guys there. So I thought in the realm of talking about race relations, it was a much more unified kind of bipartisan optimistic message. All right. Well, we always appreciate your insight. Rick Keller, former congressman. Thank you so much. Great to see you as always. Good to be with you, Amy.